Welcome, welcome, everybody. I am Danisha Roll of Sports and Entertainment Today, and I'm here with Miss Estrid Bavaresco, star of Wags Miami on E. Hi, everybody. Hey, Danisha. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for joining us. Welcome. So I wanted to have you on because I see that you have your Hera swim line. You are uh, inspiring women to get their education. Yes. You are making moves in South Florida. And I wanted to hear about, you know, how you got on WAGS, how you started your swimwear line, what's going on with this master's degree that you're getting. And uh, I understand you're looking for love. I am. I am. So let's get started. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So for those of you guys that are joining us on Facebook Live this Tuesday night for our set Real Talk Tuesday, get comfortable, prepare to ask us any questions in our feed, our, our comment section, because we'll be answering. And let's just have some fun tonight. Yes. All right, Mrs. Strid. So you're from Venezuela. I am from Venezuela. Came over to the U.S. when I was around seven years old. Um, Raised in Miami, raised in the 305, and I've been here. Went away for college for a little bit, but there's always been a home. Day County. Day County. All right, so you said your, your mom had a boutique, and you saw her with her boutique, and, it, and you just loved it. So you opened a boutique I and did. found that swimwear was selling out of control in your boutique. Yes, I did. When I was 22, I opened up my first business. Uh, I opened up a local boutique here in South Florida, in Miami, and swimmer was popping, and I love swimwear as it is, you know, um, just born in Venezuela, here in Miami, always at the beach, always wearing swimsuits. I, I just had like a passion for swimwear, and always had a hard time finding something that would fit my body type, you know? So that's pretty much how Sarah Hera Swim came about. I was like, if I start kind of handpicking my own stuff and creating my own swimwear, I could wear stuff that fits my body right and that, you know, I don't have to be out buying somewhere all the time. So that's how it came about. And it's just been my baby ever since I decided to go from the boutique. I went online. So having a passion for something that you already utilize it made sense to just go into business with that yeah, how awesome course. is that it's amazing i feel like once you're like passionate about something you should just like take that leap and and you took the leap and i did awesome so not only do you have your own swimwear line you are the star of wags miami on e how did that come about so this was completely unexpected. You know, sometimes things just get thrown your way. But one day I was hanging out and my best friend, Claudia, Claudia San Pedro, she's another one of the members on Wags Miami, gave me a call and she was like, hey girl, I just got contacted by these people from E and they want to do this reality show about girls that are either married to or date athletes. And I'm like, okay. She's like, you know, I think I'm going to do it with Julius, which Julius Peppers is now her fiance. Um, and she's like, and they asked me to bring along a friend who has either dated or is dating an athlete. So at that time I had just broken up with my ex who played for the Steelers and I was dating somebody that played for the Detroit Lions. So I was like, okay, let's just go and check it out. See if they even like us. But we didn't think much of it and you know as soon as we went they were like okay you guys heard it and i was like all right let's just do it you know right but of course you guys brought the energy you have a friendship already it makes sense yeah it made sense and it, it's been great you'll i mean you'll see it's season two a lot of things happen so you know she's always my best friend but i think some people are just more cut out for reality tv than others um it's tough. It's tough. It's not an easy ride. You have to have like tough skin. Well, I'm glad that you said that because for the women that are watching that have maybe thought about being on a reality show or, or watch and say, how could people do this? 
tell us some pros and cons about being on reality TV. Okay, so I'll start off with the pros. Definitely the pros is that for somebody like myself who has a business, it is a great platform. You know, it took my business to a different level of respect, a different level of sales, and just a different level of connections. So I think it's definitely a great platform. Um, on the contrary, you know, there's also some cons. There's also some cons. I feel like you lose a lot of your real personal self. In the show, people are so interested with your personal life. They want to know who you're dating all the time. So it's like you have to be really, really careful, even what you put, like, on your Instagram, on your Insta story or anything, because if they see you hanging out with anybody, it's automatically she's dating them, she's with them, she's sleeping with them. So it's, it's, it's scary. And also, you know, you need to have a tough skin. I feel like now we live in an age where social media will like tear you apart. So you have to have really tough skin and not pay attention to what everybody's saying or what people say that's negative. Try to stay in like the positive light and only embrace the positive things and ignore all the negative. Okay. So how do you do that? Uh, you are visible. You're on social media. People are going to talk and say negative things. A lot of people are just, you have people that are jealous. You have people that just want to get their opinion out there. What do you do? You just block them? If it's on my page, if it's on my page, I block it, delete it. Don't want to see it. I'm like, ignore it, delete. Um, if I come across it, I just really try to just, I tell myself, you know, don't do it. You know, with the wax, we have like wax gossip pages. I always tell myself before I go on one, like, if you're going to go on it, be ready to accept what you're going to read and not let it affect you. If not, do not go on it. Mm. Well, there's times that I'm just like, you know what? Let me get off this page. You know, I don't even want to read the comments because, you know, there's, there's things that people say that do affect you. You know, sometimes there's a lot of cyberbullying. There's a lot of internet trolls. And if you really let that affect you, it, 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 it takes away from you, you know? Okay. So I feel like you just need to focus on the positive and ignore all of that. So you got to have thick skin if you want to be on reality TV or just a, a public figure in general uh, because yeah. people are going to talk. So for you, how, how does it affect your friendship, even with Claudia? I feel like Claudia and I have, like, had a really strong foundation. So, you know, Claudia and I were friends for many years before this show came about. But that's what I feel like reality TV does. They, like, build you up to want to tear you apart, you know, yeah. because nobody wants too happy – friends like Claudia and I, they want at some point for there to be some drama, for us to cross or disrespect each other in some form. When they see that we're not, it's kind of like, this is boring. Got it. The viewers want action. And it's kind of that fine line where you're like, are you really going to go that route to give the viewers what they want? Or are you really going to stay solid to this friendship and really ride it out with each other? So going into filming, do you, are you already with the mindset that this is what they want, so let me not give it to them? Or do you think that, you know, or do you, I mean, how, are you blindsided? Or are you ever blindsided? You know, I feel like um, Claudia and I just have a very strong character. And, you know, with the producers, it's just like, we're just like, it's not going to happen. Wow. So that's something that I didn't know. And I don't know if you guys that are watching our Facebook Live now, I'm here with Astrid Vatheresco from WAGS Miami on E. I never knew that you could just tell the producers, like, no, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, um, sometimes people like to blame it on the producers. Like, oh, the producers made me do it. Like, everybody, no, like, nobody makes you do anything. Got it. The thing that happens is because you actively choose to go that route or to take those steps, you know? Whatever That's course what of action you took, because you did it. Yeah, so a lot of times girls be doing shit and be, 
they do things and then they're like no it was just because the producer said this no that's not the way it is you move how you want to move you say what you want to say and and you just gotta have that strong character to be like no and i feel like that was me season one and at some point i was i was like man maybe they're not gonna want me back for a season two because i was just writing for claudia and at some point she was wrong and i'm the type of girl that you know in front of people i have your back when we get in the car i'm gonna be like girl you shouldn't have done that like i have your back in front of people but i'm gonna be real with you that was too much or but i would never come at her in front of the other girls or anything like that so they don't make you do anything. Everything you say and everything you do is because you willingly do it. So that is something that anybody that is an aspiring uh, reality show star, you want to have a show, just know that whatever you do, it's because you wanted to do it. And not, and not just that, though. I think I, I can hear you say that, you know, you did it on your own but sometimes it, it seems as though if you have the cameras in front of you and you have these girls that are around you almost seems like bullying but just the way the confrontations may take place you might be sort of not necessarily forced but you come out of character you you might not even know that you had that in you until after you see the scene and you're like oh my gosh did i just say that or did i just do that yeah, so there's definitely um, season two. Any of you guys watching this, when you see it, you're gonna, once you see this episode or this scene, you're gonna definitely know this is what I was talking about. But I just did something and then I was like, I did it. I was like, oh. they just pushed my buttons to the point where I just did this with the cameras rolling. And now, what am I gonna do? Now what? Now what? you know and and that's just that's also what comes with it so you know my whole ride home i was like man i'm crying not because i did this but i'm crying because i got was out of character point, and i just got pushed to the point where i just did it and i'm like so we have to tune in you have to tune in i wish i could say more but definitely i feel like we are Wags Miami, it's a great show. Seven women, seven completely different walks of life, and seven very strong characters put together. So there's a lot of tension, conflict. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. It's reality TV. And there yep. you have it. E baby. All right, so Wags Miami, we got hair a swim. We are getting our master's degree in speech pathology and communication disorders. Yes. So how did that come about? So, you know, when I was uh, a little bit younger, I had a, an accident in which I fractured my pelvis. To make a long story short, I was introduced to this therapeutic world where I had to do rehab. And, and it just introduced me to a world, like a world I didn't know about. Um, luckily, you know, I was on a wheelchair. I was bed bound. I was at some, at a point where I thought I wasn't going to walk again, you know? Wow. And, um, I did my whole rehab and you meet a lot of people when you're in that vulnerable state. And I realized how much help these people were getting from their therapist, like how important my therapist was to me. And um, I did, I became an occupational therapy assistant at first and I worked um, in like a, interdisciplinary team, which I was like, uh, there was occupational therapists, physical therapists, speech pathologists, all working together as a rehab team, just helping people out. And, and I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with speech pathology. I talk a lot and I can only imagine having a, a communication disorder or like an impediment. Communication is so important in everything, in relationships, not just with your spouse or your mate, but friends, family. And um, I became just passionate about it and wanted to help people communicate. How awesome. Yeah. So do you ever find yourself, and I don't know, you tell me, in your program, is it is it strengthening your ability to communicate with other people or just the ways in which you communicate meaning you know, 
you know, I don't know, technically how you talk. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I, um, because of my program, I realize a lot of things that I think people don't do. Like, I feel like in our society, like we're a lot on our phone and sometimes I'm like, man, everybody, let's put our phones down. Let's communicate, you know, mm -hmm. like let's talk. Um, I do feel like because of the career that I'm getting into, there's a certain way that I should speak. What you know? that way? So I try to use this most, the most proper English I can. I, English is my second language. So I... Well, you're doing pretty well. <laughs> thank you. So English is my second language and I often feel like I have an accent. And um, then I grew up in Miami where I, there's so many cultures. So I feel like there's so much slang Mm -hmm. And at times I'm like, okay, no, I, I am with a client. I am about to meet with that professional people. hat and be. Yeah, like, I'm like, put your professional hat on. Don't, don't drop an F-bomb, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's so easy to be in Miami and just casually, you know, letting slang out and, you know, but once I'm like in my work atmosphere and in school, I try to keep some sort of professionalism and, you know, try to speak proper English because that's what I want my patients and clients to do. Got it. Got it. Okay. So the speech pathology and communication disorder master's degree, you have uh, one semester to go after this one and then you graduate. And, and then what's next? I mean, season two of WAGS is coming out. Yeah, so definitely season two of Wags is coming out. I'm finishing up my master's. Well, hopefully, I think what's next for me is love. I think season three, I probably, you know, season two, I did give myself a chance. I am, I am dating and I don't know where it's going. I don't know what's happening. It's definitely not exclusive. I don't know if it's going to be, I don't know if it might be. I can't really say too much. Um, but I, I want to grow in a relationship. Got it. And, um, I think that's what I'm missing. Love. Everybody wants love. We need right. Everybody wants somebody. I always say that. I'm like, you know, I try to, I, I really preach to the fact that women should be very independent and we should have our own. So I always, you know, when people say, give me one advice, I'm like, stay in school. Give me another advice start a business, you know, have more than one form of income. Don't settle for one, have money coming from different ways, girl, you get fired. You still got bills to pay, you know, try to do different things. I'm like always on the go. Um, especially because I've dated guys that have shown me such a luxury, like this luxury life. And I'm like, you know, okay, if it doesn't work out, I still want to drive nice cars. I still want to find dine. So that's definitely it. And I, I try to push women to be independent, but as independent as you are, you always want somebody, you know, you don't want to sleep in an empty bed or alone at night, you know? So I think that's definitely like the little piece to my puzzle that's missing. Wow. Okay. So love. So as you are dating and, and, and preparing for this love to come into your life, have you created maybe a list? I have uh, qualities that are must have. Yeah, there's definitely some qualities that um, the men that I date must have. And are you there? You know, my friends are like, what is it? He got to be chocolate. He has to be, <laughs> have nice arms. And I'm like, well, I will take those. But there's things that are definitely <laughs> more important than um, strong arms and nice chocolate skin. But, um, I definitely have a list of probably like five things that I'm totally like, if you don't have those five things, it'll be like tough for me to even consider more okay. than a friendly date, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, I can list some of them. Please do. Um, my first one is definitely honesty. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not perfect. I have so many flaws and I believe that my partner is not going to be perfect, but as long as we're honest with each other, I think a lot of things could, we could overcome a lot of things. 
Mm-hmm. So my first one is honesty. My second one is family oriented. I um I grew up in a very close knit home. My father is my everything. So I could definitely appreciate a man that loves his family. You know, I know there's broken homes and I know there's all that type of situation where, you know, things are not don't go as planned. But like if a man has his mother fully active in his life, he needs to love her. And I think if a man loves his mother, then he could love me. But if a man doesn't love his mother, it's a little weird. I'm like, if you can't if you don't love your mother, how are you gonna love me? So that's definitely my second one, family oriented. Um, so I, what did I say? I said honest. I said family oriented, um, goal driven. I need somebody that's definitely goal driven and vicious, like hard worker, because those are qualities that I have. I'm very hard working. I, I'm, I'm a gold digger. Like I say all the time and I need somebody that has a sense of humor. I, I'm not the funniest cat in the planet. I'm kind of like, I, I might be going out. And if you see me out, you might think I have this like resting face. And um, I need somebody that brings like that funny side out of me. Because if not, I could be a little dull. Got it. Got it. Okay. So we got honesty, family oriented, someone that is also goal oriented. And uh, someone that has a sense of humor. I think those are like pretty important ones. I feel like that's a good one. Okay, but let me just say something real quick. You have guys out here, and for those of you guys that are watching this Facebook Live and that are looking for love, dating, and creating your list, and I'm a big proponent of creating your list, and and I completely believe I'm a vision board kind of girl. That once you write it down and you can see it. And, and, you know, it's, it's there on paper, write the vision, make it plain, and it's, it's going to manifest, right? So, and it's happened in my life. So that is why I, I can say that it's real. So if you are dating and you haven't done it, write down what it is that you want in a guy. But at the same time, as we're watching Miss Astrid Bavaresco here, be prepared, prepare yourself, you know, I, you're in school getting your master's degree, you have your own business, you are goal oriented, you are, you know, making sure that you have something to bring to the table. So just like you are looking for your ideal type of guy, make sure that you are preparing yourself to be his ideal type. Yeah, I definitely think that's so important. A lot of times, you know, you say you want a man that does all these things, but then at the same time, it's like, what are you bringing to the table? You've got to also, you know, put in, and I've, I've taken those steps. I feel like um, from my past relationships, I've learned and I've grown so much. And I realized, like, I wasn't ready. And and I've grown so much. I've seen and I've looked back and seen the things that I did wrong. And I'm like, man, you know, I dated some great, great guys. If only I would have been the right girl for them at that time, mm-hmm. you know, and I've seen myself grow. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've embraced my mistakes, but let those mistakes like make me a better woman. And I feel like that's at the stage where I'm at now. Like professionally, I'm all straight. I'm all good, you know, and I feel like my character, I'm, I'm very defined on who I am, in which I believe in my early 20s, I really wasn't. I was just down for a good time, down to party. I was living the Miami life, making the best out of it. But now I'm like, what have I learned from this life that I've lived? And how can I use all of that to make me the right woman for my right man? You know? Awesome. Awesome. So... Knowing that, you know, early on, you may not have been ready and oftentimes you're dating someone and it's just mutually, you're not, you you can imagine being with this person, but the timing isn't right. You're not in a good place. Maybe you're not mature enough. Maybe when you look back, you can say, thank God that didn't happen. Where would I be now? You've learned so much, grown so much, experienced so much more right 
thank heaven. <laughs> so dating, uh, looking for love, ready where we got to wait and see WAGs season two for these dates that you went on. Well, yeah, you're, def you're definitely going to see um, my dating life being uh, just being active. I think you guys are going to be able to see what a poor judge of character I am. I'm a little bit gullible. Um, and it, it's funny because sometimes we see these guys that look like they're such bad boys and you're like, man, that guy is trouble. And then you see this guy that just looks like such a nice, low-key guy and you're like, he is probably perfect. And then, boom. You couldn't have been more wrong. It's completely opposite. I'm like, wait, what? How, how in the world do you look like such a nice guy? So, I mean, I don't want to go off too much because I definitely want you guys to watch the show. We got to tune in. But men in general are trouble. I think athletes live this life where they draw a lot of att attention. A lot of women want them. And a lot of women don't care what they have to do to get one. Oh, wow think you know you, what's the wildest thing you've seen somebody do in order to get a date with someone in the in, in a professional athlete someone in the sports world you know it's crazy but i think this situation that happened to me um ah, i'm like if my producer sees me that they're gonna kill but you know what i think women are very cutthroat in miami and they don't care if they go behind anybody's back, if that's your man. Like, I feel like girl code in Miami sometimes can be a little lost. I don't know what it is that happens. But, yeah, definitely I think that I've seen women go behind each other's back. Um, when you say women, do you mean friends? Friends, acquaintances, things like that. Okay. So to be more specific, there's no girl code, you feel, in Miami. So I, my question was, what do you, what's the wildest thing you might have seen a woman do to get the attention of an athlete? So the wildest thing to you is that you've seen is someone that might have been friends or acquaintances. Maybe she was dating that athlete, and then someone else came and started dating him after her. Yeah. So no that's allegiance. Pretty, I think that's pretty wild, yeah. Yes. That is wild. So we need to tune in to Wags Miami season two to see more. Well, you know what? I think that is a, a testament to there. there's an abundance of guys. You never have to feel as a woman that this is it, that after this guy, there's never going to be anybody else that'll date you, right? Or for me to say, oh my gosh, if, if it's not him, it won't be anybody. When you have a friendship, stay true to your friend, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, or even if you know people, I think there should be like a level of respect in a sense, you know, just in general across the board. I mean, if I don't know you and some guy you dated is lying to me and telling me he's not dating anybody and whatever, then things happen. But if you have to really know somebody's dating somebody, I think out of respect, you know, but yeah it's just i wish i could go more into detail but i'm definitely airing out all my wags cheese um but all bad i feel like out of every bad there comes a negative and i feel like in my situation i was like okay this definitely didn't work out because something better is coming my way something better was coming my way you know so i mean all relationships are not meant to last for life i feel there's some men that you're supposed to date some that you're just supposed to learn from and until you meet your soulmate that's what i think so, so what happens if you meet a guy and you and your friend meet the guy you both find him attractive and you all get to know one another your friend ends up the one that he chooses and they're just not compatible. But at the end of the day, and it didn't go very far, but they realize that they're not compatible. Then he decides that he wants to date you. It's happened. It's actually okay. it happened. Um, one of my girlfriends, um, I dated this guy, Greg. He was 
playing, I think he was, he was in the Bills, I believe. Um, he had dated one of my girlfriends before. He had one of my close girlfriends. Um, they never slept with each other. They never had, you know, anything like that. I know he took her out on a couple of dates and they just didn't click. Long story short, about like a year later, I meet him. But I was like, you know, here's my number. I did give him my number, but I reached out to her. And I was like, hey girl, you know, I met this guy, I met Greg, and I know you guys had a little thing. Like, how do you feel about that? Is it something that, that is okay with you? And she was like, girl, go ahead. You know, thank you so much for coming up to me and telling me, you know, even though that was nothing, it was just like two dates. It was something really casual. It wasn't anything serious, but she was like, it wasn't meant for me. Maybe it'll be meant for you. And, you know, him and I went on, we dated for like eight months or seven months and, and we're still really, really good friends now. Like he's one of the guys that I constantly talk to and it didn't end up something like, it was pretty serious, ended up having a little fallout, but I feel like honesty, like I said, is, is the best policy type thing. And I feel like I was very honest with her and I felt comfortable that she was like, look, I didn't like him like that, you know? But I did. I did. I liked him like that. So it ended up working out and cool. We ended up even hanging out like all of us together and just having a great time. So it wasn't awkward. It was just straight up just being honest and, and wearing your feelings on your sleeve and saying how you feel. Like, look, hey, I met this guy. He's kind of cute. I'm digging him. What's up? Would you really get mad if you feel disrespected? I'll, I'll fall back. But if you're good with it, I'm going to go ahead, you know? Well, I think that was big of, of both of you, you know, of you for being able to say something to her, but for her not to, you know, be catty and, and, and say, you know, it didn't work out with me. Go for it. Yeah, of course. That's yeah. awesome. That is awesome. So now, looking for love, dating, wags, Hair Swim. Guys, check out hairswim.com. You know, Hair Swim has blown out of the water. You've sold out lines as a result of Wags Miami. Now we're getting ready to see Luck Swim. Yes, so that's definitely also my next chapter. So I'm working on Hair Lux, which will be like a luxury line to Hair Swim. I'm hopefully... You know, it's a lot of work, so I'm hoping that it will be ready for spring 2018. Um, and, yeah, so maybe those are my those are my two things, love and lux for 2018. Love, it. love and lux. All right. Well, I'm so happy you were able to join us for our set Real Talk Tuesday. Got to find out about Miss Estrid Bavaresco from WAGS Miami on E! We're going to be looking out for you, excited to see you graduate with that master's degree. Right. Maybe they'll let me show that on, on um, the show. They have not showcased anything that has to do with me being in school, which okay. is um, something that I wish they could, but they could or would show. So maybe I'll throw like this bomb graduation party that they won't even want to miss. Well, that would be awesome because I think more women should definitely see, you know, education and some, 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 some more substance, right? Yeah. So seeing you on the show, we're going to tune in to Wags Miami on E! Because we got to see these dates that you go on and, and you getting out of character. Yes, yes, definitely. You guys will see all of that. You will see the drama. You will see friendships fall apart, fall back on. You know, it, you know the good thing about reality TV is that we're really giving you a piece of our life and and it's real you see some people like we did last season one darnell's engagement fell apart and now she's just trying to you know there's no right way to heal from a heartbreak and and you go through that with her you know and and these relationships are established so i think you know season two is um great if you want to see kind of like the lifestyle love friendships and you know and a little bit of drama awesome okay what night what time i i believe it's sunday night 
our the season premiere is August 20th. I am not exactly sure of the time, but I know it's Sunday night. All right. Well, we'll we'll find Sunday out. Night on, Sunday night on E, August 20th, Wags Miami season two. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Guys, we're here, Set Real Talk Tuesday with Estrid Bavaresco. We're going to tune in, watch you on WAG, and uh, watching you graduate. And this hair of luck. Yes, ladies, awesome. Follow your dreams. Yes. Ladies, you heard her? Follow your dreams, stay in school. That's what we're going to do. All right. Well, I'm Danisha Roll, and I'm set. I am Astrid Bavaresco, and I'm. I am set. Good night, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday evening.